By now we all know that wireless 5G radio frequency radiation is generally unsafe and we want to minimize our exposure to it. But the problem is, it's this idea of we don't know how much is around us, we don't know what to do, we can't see it, smell it, taste it, touch it. It's undefined, it's sort of this nebulous thing. So what we're gonna to do today is make the invisible visible. And we're gonna do that with a review of this uh, new Safe and Sound Pro 2 testing meter and a comparison of two other models. So check this out. You're gonna be inspired and empowered the next few minutes. So we are here today in the beautiful Pacific Northwest. It's a beautiful summer day. We have bare feet on the earth, we're grounding, and we're on a mission to get healthy, to minimize the, the toxins, the artificial frequencies, and to maximize the real, the natural frequencies. So these uh, three devices are three options for you that I have personally used um, for varying lengths of time. And um, I'm really excited to be able to share these with you because what I've found is this is the most impactful single device. This type of device is the most impactful single device that I have, I have found to see how much I'm exposed to, to see the sources of EMF and wireless, to show, to demonstrate to others both visually and auditorily with sound that these that these uh, testing devices have and to create solutions to bring forward simple easy effective solutions for you and your family because this is about your health and this is about your wellness and this is about something addressing at the core level where it comes home where it, where it affects you in your life in your home um, going forward uh, with the, the advent and the proliferation of wireless technologies, this is critical for you and your family to get on top of. So this is the first step. So what we have here is uh, three uh, testing devices or meters. Uh, these two that measure radio frequency radiation or wireless 5G. And this one uh, also measures magnetic fields and electric fields. So we're going to be doing a comparison on these three a little bit later, but for the most part, I want to focus on uh, this, which is the, the Safe and Sound Pro 2 from Safe Living Technologies. This is what I would call the Rolls Royce of the economical, economically priced uh, EMF and, and, and wireless meters. So let's get into uh, doing some testing and exactly show you exactly how this is going to work. All right, so here we have uh, my phone in airplane mode and the Safe and Sound Pro 2 approximately a foot away. Now, a foot is generally the, the minimum distance that you need in order to get a verifiably accurate reading. Um, so we're just gonna have a quick look on uh, and see what happens when we take the phone out of airplane mode. And you'll see before we do that, actually, look at the screen of the, of the, the testing device here, of the meter. It says peak is around one microwatt per meter squared. Max is around 19 microwatts per meter squared and average is 0.283. So those three numbers, the, the peak is what you want to look for in the moment and the maximum is during the any duration of time. You can hit this button here that says max reset and it goes back down to zero. Um, before we turn airplane mode off, uh, also draw your attention to the top of the, the meter where you see right now a flashing green light on slight. So that means it's actually average of less than one microwatt per meter squared. And so those four indicators are based upon the science-based uh, building biology guidelines. So when you get up to extreme, that's 1000 microwatts per meter squared or greater. So it's a super handy way to instantly tell based upon the established science, not the FCC or Health Canada or ARPANS or IGNRP or any of these industry, you know, non-scientific standards, but based upon the science, is something, you know, a slight concern, a moderate concern, a high concern, or an extreme concern. So as we will now um, turn the airplane mode off, so this is the, the phone, it's gonna look for uh, a signal, it's gonna emit uh, RF, this is 4G, uh, LTE, and there you see the, the peak is going up to 57,000 regularly, 57,000 times the building biology guideline for an extreme concern. So if you take a, a sideways shot, let's have a sideways look and you can see it's approximately a foot away, right? So that's again, the minimum safe, the minimum uh, distance for accuracy. 
So let's again look at the screen. So now it went back to baseline, which is we have a nice low baseline here of approximately one microwatt per meter squared. So we're in a really good location, uh, not a lot of ambient um, wireless, and this is a this is a generally a safe um, living situation here in this yard. So the phone is not actively looking for a signal now. That's why it's back to one. So we'll just give it another moment here to see uh, if it's going to uh, pulse again. Probably will very soon, looking for another signal. But this is what phone does. Those phones will do this. They will look for a signal and then go silent. And then there, boom, you see it. 35,000, another burst of signals that are 30 times the building biology guidelines for extreme concern. So. If we go back to airplane mode now, while it's um, doing that active searching, you can see that a few seconds, a few seconds of activity, now boom, it's back to baseline. So about one microwatt per meter squared. This is why it's so important to always keep your phone in airplane mode when it's not in use, especially at night. And of course, never put this phone next to your head. Never, never be on a call uh, with the phone next to your head. Use an earpiece or better yet, hands-free or better yet, uh, wire your phone and so we'll talk about that more at another time so let's one thing i, I want to mention here is what we just saw a moment ago is i had one or two bars of connectivity let's do that again and just see the bars of connectivity and you'll see right right away as it goes up to thirty-seven thousand on two bars of connectivity if i only had one bar of connectivity on my phone it would be even even much more than this and keep in mind this is from approximately a foot away so uh, very unsafe, even from this distance, okay? That's why we want to minimize our time, minimize our exposure, and understand that the number of bars, the less number of bars you have, the more the phone is working in order to try to find a signal from a tower. So um, you want to keep that in mind. And you might think, have a false sense of security that you live in a place with little wireless coverage um, and you have one bar and therefore it's not that much radiation. But in, in actuality, it is quite the opposite if you're using your phone regularly, uh, especially with, with two or especially one bar of connectivity. So let's look at other applications and other uh, devices you can test. Uh, very quickly and easily with this uh, meter. Okay guys, check this out. This is my partner's uh, desk and notebook computer. This is a MacBook and she hasn't been feeling well. Here I am thinking that the house and everything, all of this, these computers are completely safe and not emitting EMF. We got Wi-Fi off, and but she has been experiencing fatigue sitting at, sitting in front of this computer for far too long. I'm kicking myself right now, just to be honest, because this is what we found, is that even though we see the Wi-Fi off here, look at the radiation coming from this computer. So, I mean, that's maybe close to the screen. Pull it back a little bit from the screen, a few inches. So even a few inches away from the, from the computer, it's at 22,000, 21,000 microwatts per meter squared. That's 20,000, or sorry, 20 times higher than the building biology guideline for extreme concern. Now, if we, what we found out is here, the Bluetooth was on. So most people, we think we're, we're gonna turn Wi-Fi off, we're gonna plug in uh, an ethernet cable into our computer and everything is gonna be good, but Wi-Fi, has to be off and Bluetooth and AirDrop have to be off. And let's just go ahead and turn that off now and we can see how instantly all of that radiation just goes away. We're back immediately to a baseline of two microwatts per meter squared, turning Bluetooth back on, which computers are all on by default. Here's another 20,000 uh, microwatts per meter squared. This is what it sounds like. Four or five uh, pulses per second chronically you know, traveling through your, your body. And it's no wonder why she was feeling ill and fatigued and having trouble sleeping uh, and not knowing why, especially after working in front of her computer for a while. And, um, and it's no wonder why many, many people are feeling similar symptoms. So one of these devices is the best thing that you can do um, to, and best investment, I think, for your home and your family's health, period, going forward. We want to rid our home of these phantom uh, known and unknown transmitters, emitters of radiation. And please keep in mind that we need to start at the home first. Start with what you can control first, make your home EMF safe, and then we can go out and clean up our communities.
All right, so here we have just a normal router. This is a uh, three or four years old. It's just at 2.4 gigahertz, not five gigahertz. By the way, 5G on routers means five gigahertz. It doesn't mean fifth generation cellu cellular infrastructure, but that's, an, that's for another video. Um, let's look at how much this normal Wi-Fi router is emitting in terms of wireless. On the Safe and Sound Pro 2 from approximately just over a foot away from the transmitters, it's 30,000. And now let's hear what that sounds like. Sounds kind of like a machine gun, doesn't it? Well, you can kind of think of wireless, pulsed wireless radiation as subtle machine gun uh, frequencies that are causing harm on a subtle but very real level. So there, there you have it. Let's go ahead and unplug this. I've had enough of that radiation. Good, now we can breathe again. Back to two microwatts per meter squared. All right, that's the way I like it. And we see here the analog electricity meter and of course it's not transmitting wireless and I can verify that with the the, the safe and sound pro 2 and um, and again this can be used as evidence it can be used to demonstrate uh, very clearly uh, and in a powerful way what uh, utility meters and any technology is doing how much it's transmitting and how strong the transmissions are and you can actually if you have an opt-out meter that is a digital um, digital base, but it, there, the, the utility is telling you that it's not transmitting, you can actually leave the, 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 the testing device, the Safe and Sound Pro 2, on or next to the meter for 15 or 30 minutes and come back and see what the max reading is. If that transmitted at any point, that max reading will clearly show it. And again, you can use that as evidence. So another uh, very clear benefit of the Safe and Sound Pro 2 or any decent EMF meter. The Safe and Sound Pro 2 meter will detect wireless signals from 200 megahertz to 8 gigahertz and will give you accurate readings from sources such as cordless phones, cell phones, baby monitors, Bluetooth devices, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi bands, smart meters, cell phone towers, and any wireless source up to 8 gigahertz in frequency. All measurements are displayed in microwatts per meter squared, and it features four lights at the top which categorize the levels of radiation according to the building biology guidelines for safety. All right, let's get into a brief feature comparison. On the sensitivity, the Safe and Sound Pro 2 and the Classic have an expanded range and ability to pick up both low power density or the more subtle radiation and also the high power density or the stronger radiation than the cornet. The sampling rate is also better on the safe and sound uh, devices and the frequency range is comparable though the cornet does go down to 100 megahertz instead of 200 at the bottom end. And there's three levels of audio volume on the Safe and Sound Pro 2, and that's the only distinguishing uh, aspect on the audio. It's, it's great on all three models. It's so beneficial to be able to hear the radiation. The Cornet also, in its favor, has a Gauss meter and an electric meter. So it is a tri-field meter. Gauss is your magnetic field. I have found some use in a Gauss meter, but the far and away, the, the main thing that you want to be testing is wireless. Uh, the Craftsmanship, I really like the Safe and Sound Pro 2. It's sturdy, it's made, you know, it's constructed and engineered um, very uh, strongly. It just feels nice in your hand. The digital display on the Safe and Sound Pro 2 is a pleasure uh, and it shows very clearly your peak, your max, your average. And um, I love those four lights at the top, which instantly shows me um, what category, how much radiation uh, it, it, am I currently being exposed to of those four categories? Um, but uh, it's it's um, by far and away my favorite of the three. The Classic, obviously the major difference is there's no digital display on the Classic. And to me, that's um, the digital display helps remarkably. But with the Classic, you still will be able to tell instantly, are you exposed to slight, moderate, high, or extreme uh, radiation? So the Classic is a good compact design that fits in your pocket nicely. The Cornet also has a good functional uh, digital display. 
A drawback to the Cornet is potential durability issues. Um, having used uh, the Cornet, various Cornet meters for several years, they are very good, very especially good for the price. Um, I personally had one in which the button failed and I've heard several stories of the, the battery uh, disconnecting over time, but overall a good value. I love how the Safe and Sound Pro 2 and the Classic are made in Canada and the USA. The Cornet's made in China. And the sale price of uh, the regular price on the Safe and Sound Pro is $385 US dollars. And you can save 5% on that with the coupon code Josh. Same thing with the Classic, you save 5% from 149 to 142 with the coupon code. And the Cornet is regularly 179 and it's available at 162 using the link below. Overall, the Safe and Sound Pro 2 is by far and away the best of the economical EMF meters. The Safe and Sound Classic is a good option to have on a budget, and the Cornet is a good option to have if you want to also be able to test magnetic fields or electric fields, and if you're on a budget as well. The Safe and Sound Pro 2, though, is the way to go. If you are considering an EMF testing device, which I hope you are after watching this, this to me, the Safe and Sound Pro 2, is worth its weight in gold. I can't recommend it highly enough. So there you have three of the best, most economical options, most empowering options for a EMF or wireless testing device. I hope you decide to take advantage of investing in one of these three, and I believe strongly that it's going to give you immediate benefit and benefit over the long term. That's gonna be a blessing to you and your family. Feel free to send us a, a note, uh, any experience feedback that you have with these products, and or post a comment on the distributors on the seller's websites that we'll link you to. And please share the word about this technology. Thank you and we'll see you again next time.